Good afternoon. So it was 10 years ago that I first stepped into uh, Ocado's first automated warehouse in Hatfield. And although the technology there was really nothing like as evolved as it is now, I was completely blown away by what greeted me. I found myself surrounded by thousands of plastic containers whizzing around on conveyor belts, cranes and lifts operating under software control, and all manner of whirring machinery that Wallace and Gromit would have been truly proud of. And I have to say, I'm one of those slightly sad people that is turned on by where software and hardware collide. And so it was like all of my Christmases arriving in one go. And this video shows uh, one of those customer fulfillment centers, or CFCs as we call them, with the floors taken out. And the, each square there is one of those containers. There are about 7,500 of them on the move at any one time across 25 kilometers of conveyor. But this is not just some pretty 3D visualization. This is actually the front end of a very, very high fidelity, end-to-end -end mathematical simulation of this facility that we originally built to help us design it, but which we now use to test new versions of software and algorithms before we deploy them, or to play back production data for diagnostics purposes. Now, our business is all about the trying to make the process of online grocery retail as simple and convenient to use for our customers as possible. But that simplicity belies the truth about the level of complexity, data, algorithms, machine learning, and software that lies below what is an enormous technology iceberg that powers our business. And relatively few people get the chance to look under the bonnet of Ocado, but those that do are nearly always fascinated and surprised by what they see, just as I was that day. Now, almost all of this Aladdin's cave of software we build in-house. We buy almost none of it, to the constant annoyance of software companies who then seem to enjoy phoning me up. And that simulation I showed you just now is a great example of a piece of technology you probably wouldn't expect a retailer such as us to own or need, let alone to have built ourselves. But our CFCs are the largest grocery fulfillment centers of their kind in the world. They are a cornerstone of our disruptive business model, and they are also a very key uh, strand of the differentiation between ourselves and our competitors. And indeed, there are many unique benefits that come from running this kind of a centralized fulfillment model. They deliver huge economies of scale and efficiency, they allow us to range an enormous number of different kinds of products, but also to dedicate space to speciality items, whilst at the same time operating at a level of wastage that is drastically lower than conventional supermarkets. They let us give our customers greater freshness and product shelf life by truncating the supply chain. And then finally, they allow us to give those customers almost exactly what they ordered almost all of the time with very few substitutions because we use real-time availability to promise, real-time stock control, and just-in-time ordering. In this graph, each stripe represents the revenue from a different cohort of customers based on when they started shopping with Ocado. So, if, for example, the light blue stripe at the bottom represents customers whom we acquired back in 2002 when we launched our service in the UK. And as you'll see, the revenue for each cohort has remained remarkably constant, as evidenced by the uniformity of each stripe. And that's a testament to the customer loyalty that our business model and service levels engender. And contrary to popular myth, we've actually been uh, profitable on almost every single order we deliver for many years now. And the only reason that manifested in a year-end profit for us last year for the first time was simply that we have invested very heavily in building our underlying platform. And indeed, we will continue to do that aggressively, both to drive ever greater customer delight, but also to prepare this platform for, for powering the much bigger business that we intend to become. So you can think of our end-to-end -end service as a pipe that starts with the customer placing their order online and then ends with us delivering it to their kitchen table in a one-hour delivery slot. And the fact is that online grocery retail is very different from other kinds of online retail because we have to contend with things like multiple temperature regimes, 
many different product form factors, short shelf life items, crushable products, food tech segregation rules, and so on. And so what that means is that if you can do online grocery retail, then you can do other kinds of online retail, just as we do. But the reverse definitely doesn't follow. And it's also true that from an e-commerce perspective, they're very different. Because people typically shop for groceries once a week. Many people shop several times a week, such as I do. And when you do shop for grocery, you're buying many more products. Typ a typical Ocado order is between 50 and 60 products. So that means that the grocery pipe has to be very simple and easy to use, but, and also very low friction. And so you could say that really what Ocado is in is the time travel business. Because what we do is we give back our customers the time that they would have spent traipsing around a conventional supermarket, and they can now use that time for what really matters to them. In a modern airliner, the highly sophisticated uh, automated systems mean that the pilots are really there for the takeoffs, the landings, and the inevitable exceptions. And this is very much our vision of fulfilling, our custom, for to, fulfilling to our customers in the future, where the right groceries arrive at the right time, as if by magic, without them even having to add them to their basket. Now, we already do this to some extent, because a small but significant proportion of our customers place recurring weekly orders, and the contents of those orders are then calculated by our automated systems using the customer's historical shopping patterns, the rate at which they consume products, and other factors. Now, it's true that many of those customers do tweak those online orders before they actually get picked. But there really are quite a few who simply take their hands off the wheel and let us drive for them. So although our pipe is already very smart, we can see many, many ways to make it much, much smarter. And that's very definitely the mission that we're on. And that means lots more applications for artificial intelligence across our platform. Now, artificial intelligence literally eats data science for breakfast, by which I mean if you want to build really, really smart systems, you're going to have to feed them with a huge amount of data. Now, luckily, as the world's largest pure play grocery retailer, we collect a huge amount of data from across our business. There's the clickstream data that comes from our mobile apps and web shop. There's the business and other event stream data. There's the huge amount of data exhaust that comes from our automated warehouses. There's all manner of data that our vans are streaming back in real time as they scurry around the country. And then there's unstructured data from our customers, such as email, voice, and social. And we use these data to uh, drive our forecasting. We use it to drive predictive analytics. We use it to optimize our platform in real time and to monitor its performance but we also use them to feed our voracious smart systems. And looking ahead, the great thing about having a smart grocery pipe into people's homes that they use regularly is that once it's in place, all manner of other products and services can flow down it. Now, Ocado is a disruptor in the retail sector. And so for us, it's all about how we stay disruptive by constantly looking for ways to disrupt ourselves before somebody else does it to us. It's not enough for us to move fast. We need to constantly work out ways to increase our acceleration. It's not enough to just be innovative. We have to look for ways to innovate our innovation factory. So from our perspective, disruption is not an endpoint. It's a permanent state of turbulent flux. And what that means is that a huge amount of our innovation is just business as usual for us. And then beyond that, we have our R&D streams. And then beyond those, we have our 10x streams. And that's where we look for truly game-changing opportunities. Now, an example of one of those R&D streams is robotics. And we, there are potentially many applications for robotics across our business, from food preparation and customization including 3D printing, all the way through to grocery picking at the other end. And as well as our in-house robotics teams, we have two very exciting Horizon 2020 funded projects underway at the moment in this area. One is to uh, produce a new kind of robotic gripper uh, that mimics uh, all manner of human gripping and picking strategies, and we will use that in our robotic picking activities. 
but the other is called Second Hands. And here we are building a humanoid maintenance robot that, we will, that, that will learn uh, by watching our engineers working in our warehouses and then find ways to collaborate with them on their tasks. Now, sitting where you are, I'd be asking myself, why on earth would Ocado, Ocado, as a retailer, want to build a robot like that? Well, you have to go back to July 2013 for the answer, where we signed a strategic deal with Morrisons to put their grocery business online using our platform. And in January 2014, we successfully took them live 11 minutes early. The very next day, we embarked on a very ambitious project to rewrite from scratch our end-to-end -end e commerce fulfillment and logistics platform to run in the cloud. And in so doing, to wipe out all of our accumulated technical debt and to refresh our technology stacks. And at the same time, we embarked on a project to create a completely new, scalable, and uh, modular way of building our automated warehouses. Now, the combination of this new software platform in the cloud and this new hardware platform for building our CFCs is what we call our Ocado Smart Platform, or OSP. And it is our intention to use OSP to put some of the largest grocery bricks and mortar retailers around the world online using our disruptive business model. And if you're going to realize this vision of feeding the world, then you're going to have to pepper the planet with these CFCs. And if you're going to do that, it is worth inventing robots that help you maintain those facilities and ultimately to automate their construction too. And indeed, we are now building two uh, warehouses for our own use in this country, which, is, which are being built with the technology that's going into OSP. And like I showed you that simulation earlier, I would love to show you the technology that's going to those, but unfortunately, they're very much still under wraps, so that will have to be for another time. But what I can tell you about is that along the way, we've come up with a number of technologies that we can spin off. And an example is that in the new warehouses, we had to come up with a way to choreograph and control huge swarms of robots in real time. And that meant coming up with a completely new communications technology that has applications far beyond grocery fulfillment. But stepping back, what I, if you look underneath what I've been talking about, there are three key technology trends. The first is related to our CFCs and our vans with all their sensing and machine, machine communication going on, which are like little Internet of Things worlds of their own. And then you have uh, our hungry smart machines, which are feeding from data across our platform. And then, of course, you have robotics. But these are not just any old technology trends. These are genuine technology tsunamis. And where each of them is having a, a, a formidable impact in its own right, but where they collide with one another, they will create an explosion of new opportunities and in industries, as well as disrupting many existing ones. But this is not some futuristic prediction. This collision is taking place right now under the bonnet of our business and coming to the world around you soon. So where smart machines collide with the Internet of Things, they will create a lattice of smart machines talking to smart machines across the, the Internet and pulling data from the Internet of Things. And then when you add robotics to that, you end up with smart, autonomous mobile systems that are very aware of the world around them and able to interact with it. So a great example of this is the imminent disruption of the last mile, as was talked about this morning. And autonomous delivery vehicles are not only going to dramatically reduce the cost of, of the last mile delivery, they're going to open up a flurry of new kinds of delivery formats, such as uh, uh, more, um, uh, automated hubs that store your order until you want to pull it down, effectively allowing you to move from a, pull, from a push to a pull format. Or think of smart packaging. Imagine a portal in your home that warns you if products enter that might trigger one of your children's peanut allergies. Or instead of uh, fizzy drinks bottles with your name on, think of products with truly smart labels that interact with you. Or smart shelves that, as you walk past, communicate with the smart digital assistant on your phone find out that it's your partner's birthday today, and start sending you recommendations for presents or even recipes for a romantic meal in this evening. And 
smart packaging will interact with smart utensils, and smart packaging and utensils will interact with smart appliances and smart robotic cooking appliances. And devices or appliances in your home that need supplies will go online and take responsibility for ordering for themselves using companies such as Ocado as the replenishment engine. And smart homes, and all of this will form the fabric of the smart home, and smart homes, smart offices, and smart communities will form smart cities and smart countries. So what are the implications of this for companies such as you? Well, if you're up for building this stuff as we are, you may need to go shopping yourselves for some new competencies in areas such as machine learning, natural language processing, deep uh, neural nets, Bayesian statistics, time series analysis. On the IoT front, you may need a new breed of engineer in your team who's skilled not only in electronics and embedded systems to acquire the data, but also in cloud technologies for streaming, storing, and processing it thereafter. And then, of course, you will need uh, robotics and vision uh, systems expertise too. And Fortune is going to favor those companies willing to get their feet wet experimenting with these technologies before they mature. And talking about getting your feet wet, the water is already drawing back. The tsunamis are very much on the horizon. And I would urge you that the time to act is now. Thank you very much indeed. Cool. That's a breathtakingly ambitious vision that you're executing on. And I think it will be a surprise for most people who have a fixed view of what Ocado is. Mm -hmm. um, Give us an idea of how the workforce is structured, how many people you have working on data analytics, how many people you have working on AI and machine learning. Okay. So, um, as I said earlier, we do all of this in-house, um, although we are obviously collaborating with universities as well. The, uh, our main development center is in the UK, but we now have offshore or nearshore development centers uh, around Europe as well. And, um, uh, it's just a reality in our business that growing my division is probably seen as one of the most important things that we need to do. So we're currently around 750 engineers. We'll be 1,010, wow. 1,100 by sometime through next year, and it's going to keep going from there. So, and they're across all these disciplines. You know, they're, they're, we, they're about um, you know, machine learning, data science, simulation, robotics, vision systems. Uh, sort of mainstream kind of uh, development uh, techniques, product owners, the lot. And of course, moving to becoming a platform business means growing whole new tentacles as well. So we had Robert from Zalando this morning talking about rethinking yeah. Zalando as a platform yeah. to help the ecosystem as a whole connect the customer to the product. Yeah. Um, is your vision that Ocado is increasingly going to be selling everybody else's products? So um, we're launching uh, the platform for really putting international uh, uh, retailers um, um, online. Uh, but it's a really important part of what we do comes from the fact that we are this, at the moment, this duality of being a retailer and a technology business. Because that allows us to, if you like, drive some of the customer requirements and innovation from the sharp end, and then build the tech and then dog food it back into uh, and drive that sort of circle of dog fooding and innovation round and round. And we used to do that with just our grocery business, then now our non-food business, now we have Morrison's, and in future there will be OSP customers uh, feeding in their requirements too. So it's definitely about remaining, if you like, all of these different parts, a technology company, a retailer, and now a platform business. And is there another company that in particular inspires you that you think we need to be the X of grocery retail? Well, I think there are lots of companies that inspire us. Um, I, I mean, th there are obviously great worked examples of companies who have done this, whether it be you know, uh, Google taking its technology and making it available as a cloud provider. Obviously, Amazon did the same. Um, and in a sense, that's kind of the journey we're on. And there are some other similarities there, as I said, because obviously they've invested very heavily in building uh, their platform. And certainly in, in the case of, of Amazon, you know, that 
profitability hasn't been uh, the first objective. It's really been playing a long-term game to, to, to create that. And that's very much the journey that we've been on too. So we've written a bit about you in Wired, but it sounds like we need to ask you for access to this new project. So when you're ready, I think we should go deeper and Delighted. explain. Thank you very much, Thank Paul, you. from Ocado. Thank you.